everybody, this is Matt. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's been a while since I've actually talked to you guys or, or done any sort of tutorial here, so I wanted to uh, do one now because I've got a new PC that I'm putting through the ropes. And as you can see, the recording resolution that I've got going right now is a little bit better than what my previous tutorials are. So hopefully you guys see a little bit more detail and everything is a little bit more clear. Um, if you want, I, I can probably try and redo the tutorials that I did previously with the, 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 the better resolution so it's a, a little bit easier to follow along what I'm doing here. But in any case, what I'm going to do is something basic. I'm going to set up a, a few sweeps for you guys and, and um, uh, maybe a down sweep as well. Sweeps are uh, really simple devices um, that are used for transitions between sections of a song and electronic dance music, or at least the modern type. Um, uh, well, say for instance, a dubstep, you're going from the softer side to the massive drop. Uh, most likely, a producer will put a sweep in there to emphasize that transi transition and make it easier for it to follow for people who, on the dance floor. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, we're going to start out in Massive with this note. Except we're not going to use that patch because obviously that is a note and not a sweep. So let's reset Massive right here. And instead of using oscillator 1, we're going to turn that off and instead use the uh, noise uh, generator here on the bottom left. And instead of using envelope 4, like we usually use over here, uh, we are instead going to use an alternate envelope, and that is going to be envelope number 1. And we're going to put it into the amplitude and bring up the affected amplitude by a bit. Uh, not all of it. You can bring it up however you want, but uh, you know, zero to something significant would basically help your case here when trying to build up a sweep. All right. So once we get that done, we're going to go over here real quick and handle the EQ because uh, one of the good things about sweeps is they have that really noisy um, static sound, but you want to basically be able to tame the high shelf here, uh, the high frequencies here. And one of the ways that you do that is you bring the high shelf down by a bit so you don't, you don't hurt people's ears when you bring your noise up. So in any case, let's go into envelope one. And with envelope one, you can bring the attack, which is basically the time it takes that your note takes to get from zero to its its full value. Uh, uh, that is your attack. Um, so we want an attack that's quite a bit longer than usual when deal with dealing with notes. So we'll bring it up to uh, by a bit, and I'll show you what I mean by playing the note again. Okay, and you kind of heard it a little bit. You heard that little whoosh going on which is basically uh, the attack taking its time to get to the top. But we want something a little bit longer than that. That was kind of not good for an, a, a sweep at all. So let's get back to it. Okay, and that kind of works. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the transition wasn't as intense as I hoped. So I'm going to bring up the amplitude by a little bit and then shorten the attack to see if I can not get a little bit better of a result here. And I think that's it. We'll have to bring the attack by a little bit right here. Because you heard uh, the, there was a little bit of hump here and the reason is that we reached all the way to the end of our attack and we we went back into the decay portion of our of our envelope here, but uh, in order to prevent that to happening, we can also bring our decay level all the way up, and then you won't experience that dip in intensity. One of the other things that we can do is we can bring our voicing up, and this is when I turn the master volume all the way down so I don't hurt your ears again, and then um, we turn on our pitch cutoff, our wave wavetable position doesn't really matter in this scenario because we don't we're not dealing with oscillators just yet um, 
we can turn it on for a little bit because I, I, I mean, in a little bit we might be dealing with some oscillators here. Also, we want to deal with some stereo as well. Uh, as usual, we affect uh, the right end of our cutoff so it's not so intense, and that gives us greater control over the pitch cutoff variance here. And then we want to kind of moderate our our uh, stereo field a little bit so it's not so intense. Okay, and that sounds a little bit better. Um, it's it's great on the transition from zero to your high level, but uh, frequency wise, you can make it a little bit more interesting than that by slapping in a low pass filter here. And what you want to do here is kind of similar to what you did here with the amplitude. With low pass filter, obviously, um, when you bring your cutoff all the way down, it's basically uh, it's filtering out all the higher frequencies higher than your cutoff point here. So what we want to do is we want to affect the cutoff value as well as the amplitude when you're firing up your note. And the way you do that, of course, is you put your envelope here, and then you bring your affected cutoff um, up by a bit, almost all the way, if you want to. And that's the basic cutoff uh, filtered uh, sweep that you hear in a lot of uh, basic songs. Um, there's some ways that you make can make things more interesting, though. Uh, let's say we want to add in another filter to the mix, and we the way we can do that is we can set our filter uh, here filters here to serial mode, where it'll go to filter one here and then filter one two here. We'll bring the mix all the way to two, and then our volume of filter two all the way up. So what we can do is we can bring another filter here. It doesn't really make sense to add in another low pass filter because it's already being low passed. But what we can do is bring in a band reject filter where we can sweep back across in the opposite way as our low pass filter. So while it's uh, the filter one is slowly allowing more higher frequencies to um, be heard, over the time of the attack, we can actually have a band reject uh, filter sweeping the opposite direction uh, and filtering uh, a less amount of signals. Um, and, and so it, it creates kind of a dual effect here. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate this by once again putting envelope one into this slot right here. And instead of going up, we're going to go backwards here by a little bit. And we're going to set our bandwidth to something narrow so we're not um, step, stepping over our filter one by too much here. Okay, and I, I think you you can hear that. there is The low pass filter is bringing all the frequencies up slowly, but then that band reject filter is basically going back across the frequency spectrum in the opposite direction as as the envelope goes up. Okay, so once again, we can uh, we can uh, make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, maybe we want to add an oscillator to the mix, and uh, once again, we don't want uh, envelope four to affect the the uh, amplitude of this, uh, because we want everything on the sweep to basically, basically be uniform in how it uh, ramps up in, in amplitude. So what we want to do is obviously um, bring envelope one into the amplitude mix here. And then with this, obviously you're going to get one tone. But then what you can do is actually bring in your envelope to uh, a, a, one of these um, uh, frequency adjusters here as well. So what we want to do is basically set a, an adjustment value from to, to a very high value. So what this is doing is the, the envelope is now affecting the signal, 
the frequency of this oscillator, not by the key that you, uh, just by the key that you press or the the note that you put into the uh, to the keyboard, but also by the uh, envelope affecting the pitch of that note as well. Okay, right. And um, to make things more interesting, you can also add a second oscillator into the mix. Once again, affect your amplitude by a little bit. Um, and instead of doing just a, a saw wave, you can pick any old waveform you want. Just go for something random, just for the heck of it. Right? And um, you can also bring that into... Uh, you can also modify the pitch of that one, but instead of doing exactly what you did with the first oscillator, you can set a different note value. And these note values don't really matter all that much. That's why a lot of people, like, I mean, you're probably scratching your head with, like, 24.5 steps. That seems out of tune. But it doesn't really matter because you're not tuning any anything off of the sweep because it's constantly changing in, in frequency. And so you're not clashing with anything else in your mix when you're having that kind of steady rise. And that goes especially true if you have a second oscillator here. And so basically I can play for you. There you go. Okay. All right. And if you really want to be advanced, uh, then you can actually uh, bring in an LFO into one of the uh, frequencies here. So we can actually affect this by a, by a bit. We can basically bring it up by a few notes. Again, it doesn't really matter what, what you set this value at. As, as long as you like what sounds as a result, it doesn't really matter what kind of pitch you're, you're doing here. So let, but let's set up the LFO really quick. We'll bring it into sync. Uh, probably want to have it as a one eighth or a one twelfth. Let's do one twelfth just just to see what it's like. Um, and we also want to bring the X fade curve here all the way to the sine wave, uh, just because I I don't really like this combination here a lot. I'll be honest. There you go. And then. Um, if you really want to do some really cool things here, uh, you can also, um, I think you can uh, bring it up just by a little bit more as far as like ridiculousness goes. Let's, let's try like a 1 16th note, just, just, how, just for, uh, for experimentation here. Okay, right. Um, and that's... That's some basic things that you can do here. Um, once again, a lot of this basically stems from experimentation. And I want to stress the point that uh, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the experiments that I do right now, there really isn't a rule uh, to follow by. There are some things that you, want, that you need to do if you want a specific sound. But if you're going for your own sound and your own mixes, then you want to be able to experiment and not live by like extremely set rules uh, of how these synthesizers work. You may try something and it sounds really cool, but nobody else has done it. And then boom, you've invented something that a lot of people want to do and you'll be the inventor of that. So, you know, try it out. All right, so that's, that's the sweep up. Let's try a sweep down real quick. So we're going to basically go back in here and uh, reset uh, our massive synthesizer here. And once again, we're going to be affecting the noise and we are going to turn off our oscillator and we're going to once again run into our amplitude of the noise oscillator into envelope one. But instead of uh, you uh, um, going, uh, having a, a long attack, we're going to have a very short attack and we're going to bring our DK level all the way to zero, and then we're going to lengthen our, our DK value here by a bit. So instead of a long transition from zero to uh, high, you have a long transition after your attack from high to low, basically. And then we're going to 
uh, affect our amplitude in a similar manner on, on the knob here. Okay, and then um, uh, you can also set your release value by a little bit. So if you don't want to like draw long notes, you can have your release handle the rest of, of the tail here. You can also have a reverb value as well. You can set a reverb up so it, it'll help the transition between um, uh, between your your start and stops, and it all you can also add a little bit of character to your sweep down. There you go. And once again, you can bring oscillators into the mix. But instead of um, having the transition go all the way up, you it'll it'll have your your frequency go down with the mix. So you can actually do the same thing where you set your the way the the envelope affects the pitch. Uh, but instead of uh, instead of it going all the way up, you'll you'll experience a falling down in in pitch. As well. Uh, once again, we don't want our envelope 4 to affect the mix at any point, so we want to let envelope 1 do all the work here. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got. Um, uh, once again, what you do from now on is basically experimenting and finding your own sound within within your mix and what's appropriate uh, according to the genre and the mood that you're going for. So the, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, once again, uh, I will be getting on to a, a normal schedule here in a bit. Uh, obviously, I had a little bit of a fun time putting together this, this computer because I basically bought the computer in pieces and I put it together. And right now I've got something that actually works. I'm going to get a little bit more memory in the future and maybe another hard drive. But uh, it, it's working well so far. And, and uh, two pieces that I've produced with it so far, I'm, I'm really happy with the results. And I hope to get better as time goes on. So I will see you guys later and uh, have a great day. <laughs>